that type of racing that we saw last night, boy, we are in for one heck of a show on Sunday. Hey there, race fans. It's race day. Top five with me, Frank Five. The duels at Daytona. The races that set the starting lineup for the Daytona 500. And last night, boy, oh boy, that was one heck of a show that the drivers put up. Their first laps on the track in a group of cars racing side by side. And a thrilling finish not only to win the duel races, but for drivers to get into the Daytona 500. What a race last night. Well, for two of them. Let's get into all that went down at both duel races last night. Number one. Tyler Reddick from back of the pack to first place on the last lap. An impressive job by the 2311 racing drivers. He took Blue Green Vacation dual race number one last night at Daytona, holding off Chase Elliott, Alex Bowman, Carson Hosevar, and Eric Jones to win duel number one. Reddick and the Toyotas did not qualify well at all on Wednesday night. The highest Toyota qualifier was Eric Jones being 23rd quickest. None of the Toyotas made it to the final round of qualifying, but I think we all know the reason why. They wanted the cars to race better in a pack, and they showed it last night. The Toyotas at the beginning of the race, guys like Martin Truex Jr. and Eric Jones were definitely fast. Tyler Reddick was just kind of hanging out all race long, just trying to find the right lane where the momentum was going, and got up in that lane. And on the last lap down the back straightaway, by pushing Kyle Larson in the five car, Reddick saw enough space on the inside to jump right in front of Chase Elliott and make the winning pass going off into turn three. And then Larson fell back, started a little bit of a stack up in the middle of the field where a couple drivers went high. And Reddick carried the momentum off of four and was able to hold off a last second charge by Chase Elliott to win dual race number one. And Tyler Reddick, he's just such a talented chap. I love this kid. This guy knows how to drive a race car. And he is definitely a championship threat this season to win the title. And I definitely think he's a contender to win the Daytona 500. He's had fast cars over the last couple of years, but just hadn't had the luck to go along with it. This could be the year for Tyler Reddick. I just really see it in his eyes. The confidence he has, the family is surrounding him. I mean, the, the moment when his kid came out to celebrate with him on the front stretch after that one last night was just so wholesome and so special to see, you know, nothing better than a dad and to celebrate with his kid and his family, especially winning at Daytona. Yeah, I mean, points did count for this race, even though it doesn't count as a race win. It does give you momentum heading into Sunday. So a nice job by Tyler Reddick and the 45 team. Number two, Bell takes duel number two. Christopher Bell also with a last lap pass on the last lap takes duel number two away from his teammate Denny Hamlin to win and start on the first, second spot on the outside lane for Sunday's race, holding off Austin Sendrick, Denny Hamlin, John Hunter Nemechek, and Harrison Burton. Like the like Tyler Reddick and many of the other Toyotas, Christopher Bell, they didn't qualify well. Come race time, it took him quite a while, but eventually Bell found himself inside the top five and up front battling for the lead with the likes of Bubba Wallace and a few others in the middle of the race last night and barely dodged a massive wreck, which I'm going to get into in a moment, but he dodged a wreck in the tri-oval and was able to get through with no problem whatsoever. And found himself on the outside lane on the last lap behind Denny Hamlin. And coming off of turn two, there was a little separation between the teammates. Bell was able to get a big run off the two. Go to the, make a move to the inside. Hamlin came up to block and Bell knew right then. He went back to the top to get that momentum that he had. And he was able to carry that momentum down the back stretch and pass his teammate for the lead. And hold off a hard charging Austin Sendrick in turns three and four all the way to the checkered flag. I mean, good job by Christopher Bell. His first duel win like Tyler Reddick in duel number one. Bell has been close the last couple of years actually to winning a duel but just couldn't put it together. This time he did. And he's showing that he's got a good race car as well for Sunday. So nice job by that 20 team in Bell. Number three, wreck in the trial. Well, a massive wreck in the second duel race last night really affected a lot of good race cars. And one of them included was our defending cup champion, Ryan Blaney, who wasn't really happy. So to break down what happened... Coming into the trioval, there was William Byron and Ryan Blaney trying to make a pass to the outside lane where there was getting momentum from the likes of Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski. While, while doing that, Byron came up and got it to the top side just in time. Blaney had to go back to the bottom. But as Byron was coming back up the top lane, Kyle Busch, who had too big of a run behind him, hooked him a little bit because Busch was kind of going up to the high side because he was a little bit because he was getting pushed from behind by Keselowski. And that nudge by Kyle Busch got into Byron and sent Byron around and got him into the 12th car. Ryan Blaney hooked him, really, and turned him right into the outside wall, setting off a chain collision that took out Blaney. It took out Kyle Busch. It took out Noah Gregson, who was running really well. Riley Herbst as well. A couple other drivers suffered some damage, like 
Harrison Burton and Brad Kozlowski, they were, some were able to continue. Others, like Blaney, were not so fortunate. And Ryan Blaney was not happy in his interview after he caught, climbed out of the medical center um, after the wreck. He was not happy with what happened on the track. He said, I'm getting sick and tired of these uh, hooks in the left rear, right rear, whatever, whatever lane he's in. He's sick and tired of getting hooked and knocked into the outside wall. Remember, he had a pretty nasty wreck similar to this one at the august race last year where he got hooked on the coming off of turn number four and got dumped like hooked by the 54 car of ty gibbs and he had a really hard crash obviously you know aside from that he went on to win the championship but still i mean this is a car that i think ryan blaney felt confident he could win the daytona 500 now they have to go to a backup car and he said i'm getting really sick and tired of all these bleeping moves he did curse on air i'm not going to repeat that but he was not happy with what happened on the racetrack kyle bush wasn't happy either but i mean he didn't seem to take the blame for it i don't think it was really anybody's fault it was just one of those situations where like the closing rate of these cars and how much you close up on a guy after you get a little bit of separation you close back up there's nothing you could do about that but i understand the frustration that ryan blaney is dealing with right now and hopefully they'll be able to get this backup car ready and it'll be just as fast as the primary was before it got taken out and it'll be strong sunday but a massive wreck in the trial took out some really good race cars last night number four racing your way into the daytona 500 it's a sweet feeling and that happened last night to seven time nascar cup series champion two-time daytona 500 winner and our newest addition to the nascar hall of fame jimmy johnson he was able to race his way in last night as well as kaz Grala for front row motorsports starting first with jimmy johnson like the toyotas johnson didn't qualify that well and more importantly wednesday night he was not one of the fastest cars of the open teams to lock in one of those front two spots to be secured in the Daytona 500 unlike a year ago. Now, this time, he's in a different manufacturer, Toyota, with Legacy Motor Club switching to Toyota in the offseason. So when the race started, Jimmy Johnson knew he had to race his way in. Now, if Anthony Alfredo, who was already locked in on speed, had raced his way in, Jimmy, the next car in line, he would have gotten the show. But Alfredo fell in the back of the pack, stayed out of harm's way, preserving the car for Sunday. And it was all on Jimmy Johnson to get into the show. And last night, he did a really good job. Got himself in the top lane, and as a couple cars get, kept getting kicked to the back, on the bottom lane, Jimmy was able to work that high line with a couple of other cars, a mix of the, mix of the Toyotas like Shurex and Eric Jones, Jimmy found himself inside the top five and even battling for the lead during halfway. That car was really, really strong. Then he stayed with the pack after green by pit stops, but with about 10 laps to go in the duel, a wreck happened in turn four that took out Daniel Hemrick. Jimmy Johnson was a part of that wreck, but he didn't sustain a lot of damage and was able to save the car and get back in the race. But he was back there and they opened the door for J.J. Yaley and the New York Racing Team to take that opportunity and get in the 500 and beat out Jimmy Johnson. Well, on the last lap, Jimmy found himself behind the 44 car down the back straightaway. And then going off into turn three, as I mentioned earlier, when Kyle Larson got up high and stacked up the high side, J.J. Yaley had to get out of the throttle, went up high, and he had no help behind him. Jimmy found the one car, Ross Chastain, in front of him and got help from behind by Martin Shurex. And that push off of four down to the start-finish line was just enough to get Jimmy Johnson into the Daytona 500. I mean, can you imagine... A seven-time champion, a two-time winner of the Great American Race, and now a member of the NASCAR Hall of Fame doesn't make the 500? That's crazy! But Jimmy did not let the pressure get to him, even though he actually admitted down the back straightaway. He, the thoughts were running through him with the 44 in front of him, thinking, I'm going to have to talk to all my sponsors and Carvana and everybody and talk to them and not probably not be in the race on Sunday. Well, that's not the case anymore. Jimmy Johnson, he's in the Daytona 500, and I, I think a lot of us NASCAR fans... Couldn't be happier to see him in the Great American Race. I mean, that was a battle that he had last night. Same goes for Kaz Grala in race number two. Now, he did not get to set a qualifying lap Wednesday night. Something went wrong with the engine, electrical-wise. They had to change that engine, start at the rear, and his only chance to make the race was to race his way in. And the whole entire race, up until the pit stops, he was hanging out the back of the pack, just riding around, waiting for the opportunity, and hopefully he would be able to gain some positions during pit stops. Well, when some of the cars were pitting, Grala actually lost the pack before he came in for his pit stop, couldn't keep up with the four forwards that he stayed out with, and he lost the pack, and it looked like his chances were done. 
But then that wreck happened in the trial oval. He was able to get back with the pack and found himself in the transfer spot in the couple, last couple laps. But then there was a stack up with a few laps to go and he fell to the back, back there with BJ McLeod, who he had to beat, as well as David Reagan, who was already locked in. If Reagan had raced his way in, McLeod makes it and Gralla goes home. But just like race one, off the of turn four, there was a stack up on the high side where McLeod thought he had the spot. But coming to the line, the bottom lane where Gralla was in worked to his advantage and he was able to beat McLeod and make the Daytona 500. I mean, a close one just like he had it two years ago. Gralla came to Daytona for the money team that's not entered this year. He came in needing to race his way in. He had a speedy penalty in his pit stop. He lost the pack. It looked like his chances were over until the last lap when he caught J.J. Yaley, who was slow out there all by himself. Gralla stuck with the fast group of cars that were trying to catch the Fords. And he was able to make the Daytona 500. And this time, he does it in a Ford just by a few inches. But a great job by Kaz Gralla to get into the show. And a nice job also by Jimmy Johnson. Both drivers will race in the Daytona 500. And number five. While some are happy, some are not so happy as they did not make the Daytona 500. And that was J.J. Yaley and B.J. McLeod. But I will say this. Both drivers put up one hell of a fight last night. Like, J.J. Yaley was just picked up by this team a couple days ago. This team was New York Racing Team. They have been rumored the last few, week and a half, week, last few weeks about make, entering the Daytona 500, but we didn't know who the driver was. A lot of people thought it was Greg Biffle, and they had a fire suit with Biffle's name on it. But Biffle went on social media and said, I'm not the driver. I'm sorry. I'm not behind the wheel. It's a little bit of contract dispute and everything. So they added J.J. Yaley to the team. And Yaley put up a fight even after he lost the pack. Then that caution happened with Daniel Hemrick's wreck. Yaley caught back up and it looked like he was going to make the Daytona 500. He was in front of Jimmy Johnson on the back stretching into three. But when that stack up happened in turn three, Yaley had to go high to avoid because if he'd stayed where he was, he would have bumped the back of the one car and would have turned him in the wall and probably would have collected the 44 as well and knocked him out of the race. So he had to go up to avoid and that was not a right decision for him to make as Jimmy got the momentum on the inside and passed him with help from Truex from behind. And ultimately, J.J. Yaley did not qualify for the Daytona 500. But he put up one valiant effort and Jimmy went up to him after the race and shook hands. Just good sportsmanship by both drivers. Hopefully, Yaley will get an opportunity next year. and Maybe he gets some more opportunities with this team this year to run a couple of races, depending on if they decide to run any more races after this. And then B.J. McLeod, he came into this Speed Weeks with no charter available because he sold his charter this offseason to Spire Motorsports for Zane Smith. McLeod came in with an unsponsored black car needing to race his way into the 500. But he did an exceptional job last night. Exceptional. Beyond expectations. I thought with the equipment he had, he was going to lose the pack at the start of the race. But he stayed in the pack. And like the first race, the top side kept advancing to the front. He was in the top lane. He was running in third spot. He was up front battling with some of the top dogs. Bubba Wallace, Christopher Bell, William Byron, Michael McDowell. Racing up front for the lead at Daytona in a dual race. He did an exceptional job. And he stayed with the pack after the pit stops. But he was kind of part of that big wreck in the trial where he did make some contact with a few cars, including Ryan Blaney. But they were able to continue, stay in the lead lap. And in the last lap, it looked like McLeod had the spot to get in the 500. But once again, off of four, a stack up in front of him. He had to get out of the throttle. And Gralla got the momentum in the inside and got Gralla into the show. And McLeod goes home. But, but McLeod was very proud of his team in his post-race interview. I mean, he says, like, got nine, ten full-time employees, even for a team that's going to run part-time. They are going to run Atlanta next week, from what I understand. But he did an exceptional job last night. I mean, both him and JJ deserve a round of applause. I thought it was going to be cakewalks for Jimmy Johnson and Kaz Grala, and most people had them as the favorites for the teams needing to race their way in last night. But Yaley and McLeod put up an amazing battle against those two drivers last night that did get in the show. But Yaley and McLeod did a great job. I mean, you got to tip your cap to them. Two drivers and underfunded teams battling it out with a seven-time champion and a young promising talent behind a team that's definitely been strong the Super Smooths last few years just to get into the 500. Again, Props to those drivers. They did a great job. They may have came up short, but they showed that they were there to fight last night. They came to play. So the starting lineup for the Daytona 500 is now officially set. Joey Logano and Michael McDell, who both started uh, won first place and second place in qualifying on Wednesday night. Both of them will start on the front row for the Daytona 500 after they are able to bring their cars home in one piece of the checkered flag. As I mentioned, a couple cars like William Byron, Ryan Blaney, 
uh, Kyle Busch, Daniel Hamrick, and Noah Gregson. They will have to go to backup cars after getting involved in those wrecks last night. A few other drivers had, had minor damage. They will be able to repair those cars without any problem whatsoever. But if they find something wrong with them today, they may need to switch to backup cars. But the lineup is officially set, and we are just a couple days away from the Daytona 500. But don't forget, tonight we've got the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series opener at Daytona, the Fresh from Florida 250. Can't wait to see those boys and those trucks going side by side, 190 miles per hour, full throttle all night long. It's going to be a battle, and I cannot wait for that race. Tune in on FS1 at 7:30 to watch the season season opener for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. But I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe, like, congrats to Tyler Reddick and Christopher Bell winning their duels, and congrats to Jimmy Johnson and Kaz Grala on making the Daytona 500. Have a great day, everybody, and have a wonderful night tonight watching the trucks at Daytona. Let's go racing!